Nature and culture do not be mistaken about causality. By presenting the evidence of the impossibility of defining races, genetics has ruined the justification of nations seeking to impose their dominance. Albert Jacquard and Claude Levi Strauss might emphasize that physical ability is the consequence rather than the cause of cultural realities in many cases. For example, the average size of men in Europe has increased by 10 centimeters in 100 years. As we have seen, racism in the name of biological difference is an aberration because the difference does not affect the common nature of all men. This should be mentioned continuously as Darwin himself did. His two major works criticize the ideological application of the notion of race. Hence his anticipated refutation of Wilson's sociobiology, which reinforces social hierarchy by claiming to explain social status with physiological data. Hence also his rejection of social Darwinism, which projects in human societies the theory of the struggle for life and of natural selection as well as the physical model of the law of the strongest while ignoring the fact that the social cohesion can offset or mitigate inequalities, just as medicine allows the premature child to survive. As a champion of universal brotherhood, Darwin emphasized the role of education and solidarity. Thus, even beyond his work, he delivered a decisive refutation of all racism and ideology claiming to rely on nature to justify social inequality. This, the identification of racist or xenophobic prejudices can lead to defining the ethical and intellectual approaches necessary to lead the battle of ideas. 10 Critical Steps Against Racism 1. Stop attributing to nature what is of social origin. School failure that often, but not always, affects the children of immigrants is often attributed to living conditions and not to a genetic reason such as IQ. 2. We constitute the diagnosis and interpretation of our way of understanding certain inequalities of economic development or legal disparities. The level of industrial development in no way attests to a latent inferiority of certain peoples but simply a group's completely different way of living. 3. Discern early on the apparent underlying intentions as the excuses for self-serving behavior that they really are, practicing the philosophy of suspicion, stymieing any naivete. Critical deconstruction must, in fact, go back to the particular interests that are hidden under the pretext of humanitarian or civilizing activities. Under paternalism and the evolutionist prejudice that claims to classify peoples upon an imaginary track to civilization. Colonization, for example, was first and foremost a secular enterprise enacted by the use of inexpensive labor and the unscrupulous appropriation of raw materials found in the colonies. Four, recall recent and distant history so as to highlight the misdeeds of criticism and xenophobia. The civilizing mission of the Christian West began with barbaric expeditions accompanied by massacres and oppression, as in the case of General Bugud in Algeria between 1844 and 1848. Five. To highlight the role played by racist theory in the logics of exploitation, domination, oppression, and extermination. Colonial conquest is now well known in its real motives. Land is seized, its people subdued, and we exploit one another without any concern other than profit in its pseudo-justifications. As for Nazi racism, it can be related to the shift from religious anti-Judaism to anti-Semitism. 6. Deconstruct racism by practicing critical drift. Montan 
Montesquieu, Rousseau, and Levi Strauss, among others, recommended him to free himself from the ethnocentric illusion by a distant gaze. Everyone considers those customs that are not his own to be barbarism. As if it were true, it seems that we have no other test of truth and reason than the example and idea of the opinions and customs of the country we are from. 7. Counter the current racist pattern. We cannot purport the existence of several human races, nor can these groups be abstractly ranked. In fact, a hierarchy implies a comparison which itself can only be defined upon comparison criteria. Do we compare the quantity of goods produced? the fate reserved for the elderly, or the degree of solidarity within an organization of the distribution of wealth. 8. Avoid confusing criticism of a religion, customary practice, or tradition with a racist act. Never forget that racism targets people, not just doctrines or beliefs. To even speak of state-sponsored racism in regard to the secular principles of the nation is absurd. 9. Bring to mind two exemplary figures of the anti-racist fight for the emancipation of peoples. Pastor Martin Luther King, did, who did more than dream of a world without segregation or discrimination, he fought in America against all forms of racism that weighed on black Americans and was assassinated. Nelson Mandela, who fought against apartheid in South Africa, Becoming president after 27 years in prison, he was able to affirm his universalistic humanism. He refused to promote the emancipation of black South Africans for the sake of taking revenge on white South Africans. His universalism rejected the abusive generalization that turns the fight against the racism of some whites into a fight against all whites. It is also in this sense that justice has nothing to do with revenge. Hence, the need to reject the resentment of reverse racism and its compassionate legitimization. 10. Involve universalistic humanism by referencing human rights declarations such as the Declaration of the Rights of Man and of Citizen of August 26, 1789 and the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Of course, to begin, we must reject the false universalism which forms an idealized image within a particular society. The idea of universal emancipation suggests that every human being be generously credited with the freedom to redefine herself instead of confining herself to her past. Providing public awareness with key benchmarks. According to Montesquieu, civic virtue is the strength of the democratic republic, whereas fear is the strength of despotism. Racism is an irrational ideology of fear, which becomes deadly rejection. According to Condorcet, public education bases civic mindedness on the critical spirit of achieving a shared culture. Let's face the challenge of culture to get rid of racism and xenophobia forever. It is not enough to eradicate them as long as social injustice and the distress it engenders produces the sad resentment of hatred of others and the search for illusory compensation. But this wager is necessary to gradually install a public awareness better armed to go back to the real causes and break free of dangerous reactions. One main reason why I really liked this paper was because it doesn't just lay out the problem of racism, but it actively calls upon the reader to take an active role in uh, combating racism and even lays out 10 steps in which the reader can actually take this advice and put it into action It's uh, unlike many academic papers that just lay out the problem and do not propose any solutions. It's a a very Masonic teaching, whereas we seek to be inclusive and to um, bring into our fold those of all ethnicities and races 
and of uh, persuasions, religions, and political I- ideas. If you enjoyed this podcast, you can subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, Podomatic, and Podbean. You can also find International Brotherhood of Freemasons podcast on YouTube, Facebook, Google+, Twitter, and at ibfpodcast.com, where you can support the show by clicking on either the Patreon button or the DonorBox.org button. Anyone who donates at least a dollar a month or makes a one-time donation of $12 will get access to original articles, their translations, pictures, and hyperlinks. If you're able to make a monthly donation of at least $5 or a one-time donation of $60, you will receive a producer's packet in the mail as well. Please send in any comments or questions to podcastibf at gmail.com. Be sure to look for next month's episode wherever you heard today's episode. Until then, remember how good and pleasant it is when brothers live together in harmony.